How's it going everybody? Coming to you today with another mail call from Core Essentials. A couple of weeks ago, I tested out their new EDC belt. A couple of months before that, I tested out their garrison belt. This time, we're going to be testing out and trying on and setting up their brand new battle belt. This is their two-piece battle belt system. I'm going to bring you down to the tailgate. We're going to have a close-up look at it, show you how to put it together, and give you my first thoughts on it. Of course, I'm going to need more time with it than what this video will say if I want to recommend it or not. But my first thoughts, first looks, setups of the Core Essential Battle Belt. Let's do this. Okay, so when you open your box, this is what you'll get. You've got a nice little pamphlet printed on good cardstock. Tells you all your pieces. Gives you instructions. Kind of shows you one set up, and yeah, so there's that. You'll also get your belt buckle. Good looking little buckle. It's got the teeth. Locks in. You get a bag of tools and a measuring tape. We'll go through all of this, show you how to use it. This uh, end smashes down on the Velcro belt, I believe. And tool with extra screws. A belt keeper okay uh, optional item you can get the hanger so you can hang this up when not in use your two belt system get the plastic off of this this one is going to be your velcro inner belt Just your typical, if you've seen a battle belt, you've seen something similar to this, although this one does have a trick up its sleeve, I'll show you shortly. And here is the actual battle belt. So, show you it. It's got Molly attachment. And go there is the core ratcheting system each one of these clicks will give you a quarter inch of adjustment so you can fine-tune it exactly what you need good looking stitching I mean that looks good just randomly picking a spot here's another spot we'll randomly look at stitching looks good this of course has the velcro on the back side so that it can connect to this. So here's a look at everything that comes in your box. So let's back out and we'll look at each piece. The instructions for this are slightly different than the instructions for the normal belt, the EDC belt, like what I have on here. They give you this tape and the tape is supposed to show you here. You line this part up on the tracks and you roll this out the instructions are here you can kind of see that pause it and have a look or whenever you get your own you'll see cut on your pant size mark so whatever size pants you wear is where you're supposed to cut i am normally wear a 34 ish size waist somewhere between a 34 and uh 32 30 33 somewhere in there so that's where i'm going to start with is the uh, 34 mark and uh just kind of have a look and make sure the 34 is right and that i don't need to go to 33 or that i don't need to go bigger so i'll kind of look at that but that's what the instructions say uh so you would take so you take your track part here 
line up with the track part here. And stretch this out until you get to your belt size. Make sense? Okay. Then you would cut this at that size. Okay, so I'm gonna line up the end, measure out to where my pant size is. I'm gonna mark it and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so my pant size 34 hits right behind this set of stitching for the molly. So I'm actually gonna cut right in front of that, which will be in between the 34 and the 35. But when I cut this here, that stitching should help hold things in place and keep it from ever unraveling. I don't think the belt would, especially with the way that the buckle holds it down. But since it's only a half inch, that also gives me a half inch in case I get a little bit fatter. So now we're gonna cut at that line. Okay, so there we are. And now I'm just gonna take a lighter. It doesn't call for this, but I'm gonna take a lighter and just kind of burn the ends of that a little bit. There we go. And you can actually see that in there. That white is the power core uh, trademark thing that they use inside their belt to give it such rigidity and it really does work okay so after i kind of singe the ends i'm going to take and install the belt to do that first i need to open up these screws to allow the belt to slide in you don't have to take them all the way out just get them to where they're flush on the inside and there you go you can see it's nice and flush on the inside you're going to insert in two until you can see right there, we're right at the end. You're gonna push down your teeth and lock that in place and re-tighten. You don't wanna over-tighten and strip any threads, so be mindful of that. That's good and tight. That's good and tight. All right, so now we have our outer belt completed. Now we'll work on the inner belt. For your inner belt, it says to attach it to the outer belt. So line up your ends. There's no Velcro right here, so you'll have to hold that part and bring it until they connect. And then you're gonna work it around, making for sure it's connected good until you get to your buckle. Now, technically, You, if you're not comfortable, you can take your buckle off or do this step before you put your buckle on. I've done enough of these core belts. I know where the end is. So you take your end, subtract one inch. So you're gonna subtract one inch from what you cut your outer belt to cut your inner belt. You could also do that with just the tape measure or you can attach it either way. Uh, I cut mine a little bit over 34. So I would be need to cut this one at a little bit over 33. It's gonna cut basically the exact same as the outer belt. So no reason to show you that. I'm gonna come back in just a second after I have this one cut. So after you cut your end, you can take your torch and just kind of hit that real quick, making for sure that you don't have any crazy loose threads. And the kit comes with this right here that you clamp onto the cut end. A little piece of metal, little belt in. You're gonna put this on and smash it down to clamp onto the end of this belt. So you can kind of bend it a little bit by hand and get it started so that it stays on there, but you're gonna to need to use some sort of tool whether you use a hammering tool or a squeezing tool, something like that, and smash this down. Whatever you use 
be careful not to mar up the surface. So you'd want something smooth jawed or a smooth hammer, or you wanna cover this with something, something to make it look good. I'm just going to cover mine with a cut piece of the, uh, the belt and I'm gonna kinda just bank, 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 bank against the tailgate. After you get it sufficiently flat to where it's not going anywhere and it's really bit in there good, now's the next step, trying to do it on. I went ahead and removed my jacket, tucked my shirt in, and yes, that is a really cool kick-ass, Night of the Living Dead long sleeve shirt from a company called Fright Rags. Not a sponsor, I wish they were, I love their stuff. Absolutely love this shirt, it's super cool. Anyway, got it all out of the way. Gonna remove my current belt I've got on, which may look familiar to you. It is the Core uh, Multicam Black. So remove that, and I'm gonna take the inner belt. Now this one, I haven't talked about this yet because I was gonna kind of wait until this next part. Normally when I put on a belt, I put the belt loop or the belt buckle over here on the side because I carry appendix and I don't want the belt buckle interfering with my holster. This little hex cutout, hapalon, whatever they call this material, this little hex cutout, you want it to go in the center. So I'm gonna insert this and wear this like most people normally wear a belt. Going through the first buckle, or the first loop first. Okay, after you put on your inner belt, making for sure that this little hex center is close to center here on your belt line, you'll take your outer belt and attach the Velcro and bring it around to the front and cinch it down. You've got your Velcro end keeper here. There you go. Now, you can see I've got the latch on the bottom. That's personally how I like to wear mine, is latch on the bottom. You can wear it latch on the top just by flipping the belt over when you put it on. So now it is attached. It goes all the way around. Looks pretty good. It's cut. I've got room to tighten up and I've got room to let out. Ugh. If I can get to it, there we go. So I can let out. And give myself room that way. Now, that is one of the beautiful things about core belt. I said each one of these is roughly a quarter inch. I was about right there. So I still have roughly this much I can tighten down or I can loosen up. That ratcheting system is awesome. And like I was saying, if you want the latch release, if you want it up, just put the belt on this way. If you want it down, put the belt on this way. That depends on you. Once you get it set up the way you like it and you actually start attaching stuff like what we're about to do, Obviously, you won't be able to switch or your holster will be upside down. So make sure you got it the way you like it to start with. Um, yeah, so far, super impressed. Now, that is also this, the reason why you want this piece right here is that adjustment. This piece here is allow, allows the inner belt to collapse. So you wear the inner belt where you feel comfortable. You've got that little piece there that will collapse and allow you to cinch down the outer belt without it causing a whole lot of discomfort underneath. So it works really well. That's why you want this piece here in the center so that when you tighten that belt down, that will collapse. I don't know if you can see that that well, but that piece there will collapse and allow it to cinch down without you having to adjust this belt. 
it would really suck to every time you needed to adjust this, you had to take this off. So adjust this how you like it, where it's comfortable. Put that outer belt on, and when you've got that heavy load, cinch it down. That piece gives, gets nice and tight, boom. Excellent idea. I really, really like that. It allows me to put this where I feel I need it for comfort. And before I put on the battle belt, I can actually loosen this up a little. Uh, oh, I ate a whole lot or oh, I feel bloated today. I need to go poop. Or, okay, that right there is about where I would normally wear it. Right there. I can now throw this on, cinch it down because it's loaded, let it out, and it's not going to change how my pants are riding. Let's get this dude loaded up and put it on and actually wear it. Normally, I'm a proponent of running your battle belt light. And the reason why I say that is I'm not a operator. I don't go into dangerous situations. I usually have mine set up for if there's a bump in the night. If I hear something and I'm like, ooh, I might need a little bit of gear. I don't know what that was. Whether it's coyotes out here in the back, whether it's you know, something trying to get chickens or whatever the case might be, I've got something. Or if it's a more you know, more along the lines of the two-legged bad guys. I don't normally run a heavy belt. I've got a video, uh, gosh, probably a year ago or more where I talk about battle belts and how most people I believe do them wrong by putting everything on there. Now, with all that said, I'm gonna run this one a little bit heavier. According to Core, this thing should hold 20 pounds. I don't have, and I don't agree with ever putting 20 pounds on your waist. Um, I don't have that much either. So what I'm looking at is installing a holster for a full size 1911, one AR mag, fully loaded, two spare 1911 mags. I'm gonna be trying this ghost holster. This one has kind of a, a drop and an offset, allows it to ride a hair lower um, this would work well for somebody who wears a, uh, plate carrier or something along those lines. I do have a plate carrier. Uh, I don't wear it often. I've got it as a just in case. So I can run this as the just in case. If you don't run a plate carrier, you don't really need something that drops like that. You can get by with something like this blade tech that would fit right there and actually be a little bit tighter. So to start with, I'm gonna try the Ghost and see how I like it, but I do have the ability to run this one. Honestly, I could probably get by with this one. The odds of me needing to put this on and need to put on a plate carrier, it's pretty darn slim. But I figure for testing this out, let's load it down, make it worse. Uh, actually test the weight, more weight than I would normally have on it. Also, I would normally run just something like this on a battle belt. Real simple. This is the flat pack uh, with a soft T tourniquet. I would run that as my first aid because once again, I don't really live in a bad area. I'm not expecting roving gangs of madmen and all leather coming trying to take my goods. But if it gets to that, I would have more. This would normally uh, go inside with this one and that would be my first aid on my battle belt. I wouldn't need a whole lot I'm gonna run a much larger uh, First aid kit Just to test the weight I, Once again, I don't think I need this much for an average bump in the night Losing cool guy prepper points for this, but I honestly believe most of us are way over prepared when it comes to gear most of us are using crap that we're never gonna need. So I am of the opinion that KISS, keep it simple, stupid. Normally I would do this, a holster, a couple of mags, I'm done. But some very small first aid like this. But 
since I'm gonna be testing this weight-wise, I'm gonna throw a heavy first aid kit, heavy 1911, extra magazines. Let's do it. Okay, so here we are all kitted up. I've got full-size steel frame 1911, two 1911 mags, AR mag, a heavy-ish first aid kit, pair of gloves, and this thing is rock solid. Uh, of course, this is just a first setup, first impressions. First setup, first impressions. This thing is top notch. I honestly think this is a great piece of kit. Your mileage may vary, but I think this is great. This thing fits good. You've got that room for that adjustment. If you really need to cinch it down, I've still got room. I could attach more shit if I wanted more shit, you know. I could uh, undo these and run them through, and then I've got a tourniquet here in front. Uh, I could run a knife somewhere over here or whatever. So, I mean, I've got plenty of room still to go if I needed to or if you need to make this a bigger belt for yourself. I cannot believe how comfortable this is carrying a full-size steel 1911. I mean, all of this, I don't know how much it weighs, but uh, it's crazy comfortable. Super impressed. Absolutely super impressed with it. It looks good. The stitching looks good. The uh, molly, everything attached with no issues. Uh, even this cheap pouch attached no problem. G-code attached no problem. I mean, everything works with it so far. It looks great. It fits really well. And, uh, yeah, I definitely think it's a, uh, first impressions, I definitely think it's a great belt. I would have to put more time and more use in it before I can 100% fully recommend it. But, so far, I really like it. I uh, think it looks great. I mean, it's holding the weight by itself. It's holding the weight of that full-size 1911 with no problem. I and mean, look at that. And that's not counting the inner belt. And talking about the inner belt, if for some reason you weren't wearing your inner belt, if you were wearing just your normal belt, I'm just gonna throw this on real quick. You're just wearing your normal everyday belt and you need to throw this on it still works without the inner belt. Now, it doesn't work as well. But you can still use it without that inner belt. You see, you do get more movement. It's not locked into place like it is with that inner belt. But if you had to in the middle of the night, you didn't have the, the inner belt on, you could throw this on even by itself, it's still gonna get you through in a pinch. Uh, there we go. So, ladies, gentlemen, that is my initial review of the Core Battle Belt from Core Essentials. It is a great system, I believe. Like I said, I will have to get more use with it. But I believe it's awesome. I just do. I like it. Um, I'm not going to give a 100% recommendation for it until I get more use out of it. But I am going to... Uh, come back and follow up with it after I get some more use. Also, my son is possibly 
going to be a uh, on the road deputy in the next couple of weeks. And if that's the case, I will let him borrow this and try it out. And it'll be a full loadout that he has to carry for the county. Handcuffs, gun, mace, all that good stuff. So we may get some real world use, not just range use from one here momentarily. It's a good looking belt. I like it. It carries extremely well. Two thumbs up with the caveat that it needs more testing. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you go out and get you a core belt. I, uh, I'm a fan. I think it works. I am a fan. So that's it. Core battle belt, fully kitted out, loaded, not going anywhere. I like it. I do. I think it looks good. That belt buckle looks good. It's carrying all this weight really well. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.